Hi folks, in this clip I'll be looking at our perceptions and how these perceptions are influenced by our childhood. For example, when you're young and it's Christmas time, you're excited and you see images all around you of fir trees, snowy mountains, and as you grow up, as an artist, photographer, your perceptions change and you add more color, more depth into your images and even stylize them slightly as you add your own personality into your paintings and the images. But there's a problem. You see, do you see what the problem is? Look at the trees on the right and look at the trees on the left. Well, fir trees, the branches of trees don't grow towards the ground. They grow upward to the, to the light. So even in your stylized images, the branches never grow down to the ground. They grow in the opposite direction. For example, if I show you two stylized images, which, which stylized image, the one on the left or the right, do you think best represents the tree in the back? Well, that's a choice that you have to make. But the point that I'm making is that our visual perceptions, what we see around us, is influenced by what we are taught and what we believe as children is true. And we can see something and not really look properly. So now I show you an image like this. You've been taught that the sun is 150 million kilometers away from the earth. Where would you say the sun is when you look at this image? This image indicates that the sun is above the clouds. Look at that, the light and the angle of the light rays. And this is hard for you to accept. So now you say yes, but look at this image. The angle of the sun's rays is dispersed by these trees like this. It's the same thing. Do the rays from the tree disprove this image, what this image tells you, that the sun is close by? So let's analyze this. So, when you walk and you're standing by the tree, the light disperses and always points toward you. And as you change your position, that light rays, they follow you and change. And when you're on the opposite side, it always points towards you. So the fact that the rays disperse by the tree doesn't mean that the sun is 95 million miles away. Not at all. In fact, it proves that the sun is close by. So when you're standing in the one position, you don't see the light rays pointing to the person, yeah? The same is underwater. This diver on the left will see the light rays dispersing from the hot spot on the ocean surface and the person on the right will see the light rays point towards him. And you swimming, you will always see the light rays pointing towards you. The same with the light rays from the tree. They change as you change your position. But the light rays from the clouds, they stay constant, no, no, no matter what, they stay constant. So as you change your position, they still stay the same, because the sun is directly above the clouds. We also have to take into account in this image that the degree of the light rays 
depends on your exposure of this image. But with the light rays from the clouds, you see this with the human eye. This doesn't depend, the light rays don't depend on the exposure of the image. And if you were flying in a helicopter, you would fly through those rays. Those rays won't follow you. Those rays are constant, they point downward to the same spots on the ocean floor and those rays won't change. And a person on the opposite side of the horizon sees the exact same image. Now with a tree and the light on the tree, two people at two different angles don't see the same light. Yes, and you look up, you take your camera, you take a photograph. The fact that the light rays, you see them like this, is because the sun is in the Earth's atmosphere. If the sun was 150 million kilometers away, you'd see the sun, and the rays would only be observable like this because you cannot see the rays in space. They would have to shine on something. Not so. So to recap, you walk through, you're walking down the road, there's a street lamp. The indication of the rays is where the lamp is. You know that. You walk through that, that lamp, the light, you walk through those rays from that light. It doesn't change. Now, I, I put a steel rim there, the light reflecting off that rim is going to follow you as you walk. But the lamp, the light from the lamp doesn't change, the street light doesn't change. And you know this, uh, it's common sense. So the fact that the light is reflecting off the, the rim and dispersing like that doesn't alter the fact that the light from the lamp is an indication where the lamp is. It's simple. So you know, you take a piece of paper and you cut out a small square and a triangle in the paper and you bring a flashlight down from above. The closer the light is to the shapes the more the shapes will disperse beneath and the more irregular or the more dispersed the rays will be and the lighter it will be underneath your cutout and as you lift your torch up or your flashlight up that's what happens we know that and when we see an image like this we throw common sense out the window because we've been taught that the sun is 150 million kilometers away yet what we see around us every single day disproves it that it's a lie about the moonlight so what do you go with so if you're not convinced yet that we're being lied to well 
there's a lot of things that you haven't thought about and let me just point some of them out to you. So in this image you can see with your own eyes that the light is local. It's overcast. So therefore think about what's what the people in the distance see. Think about it. Is the sun 150 million kilometers away just sending a beam of light your way seating the clouds there by you and just nicely dispersing for you to have a look at while the rest of the ball earth is in darkness I mean it's insanity what they teach you at school is junk it's mindless garbage and it's time that you grow up the only way you can escape from it is to use your eyes this is what you should see. All the rays coming at you at the same angle. That means it's impossible for you to see an image like this if you're on a ball earth and this and this light source was 150 million kilometers away and the angle of the rays were all coming at you at one angle. The light, the, the light has not localized. What about the moonlight? Well, that's it's even more insane with what they teach you with the moonlight. What do you notice? Look. Look at the moonlight. Look at the moonlight in the clouds and on the ocean. Now, look at the light from the houses. And what do you see? The moonlight doesn't reflect color. The moonlight is not the same type of light as the sun. The sun's light reflects the color back into your eye. The moonlight is not the same. There's the street lights. They're reflecting the color of the buildings. So the moonlight only reflects certain hues. Now they want you to believe that the sunlight is bouncing off the moon traveling at 400,000 kilometers and then just lighting up the little spot where you are. And when you look at this image you know that for this to happen the street lamp, the lamp is quite close because that's why the image looks the way it does. Here's the moon, behaves the same as a street lamp, but this moon is 400,000 kilometers and only lights the little spot where you are. Really? This image on its own, without any compasses and any tape measures and calculators and maths, this image is only possible on a flat earth and it is what it is. The fact that you get angry because someone's telling you the truth that look at this image it tells you the earth is flat. The fact that you get angry that's your problem. So they want you to believe that the light source is 100, 
50 million kilometers away and that it can reflect off a ball and the light from that ball will travel 400,000 kilometers through space and you'll see it like this this image shows you that the light from the moon is local how can the moonlight only light the clouds around it because it's local and I'll tell you that the Sun is a ball of exploding fusion and gas but itself doesn't explode it only explodes a little bit every day so that you can bask and play in the in its rays so the Sun is a mess of exploding matter and in your whole life you've never seen it flicker once you can take a photograph you can film and this exploding mess of fusion spews out the same amount of light constantly every second over thousands of years really the simple truth is that they lying to you the sun is not an exploding ball of gas that never explodes it'll just wear itself out after a while it's nonsense quite amazing from nuclear fusion that you can play in its rays and when it sets it's awesome to look at and its rays will grow flowers and its rays will produce fruit see as long as you keep looking at the banana and you don't stand back and look at the whole picture then they're happy, they stay in control but as soon as you see the real earth well they can't have that because then they have no more power over you you won't put your trust in them you won't vote for them and you won't put your hope in them and you will see them for who they really are lying thugs a criminal organization that rules all earth so do some research into the Vatican and the Jesuits and you will see for yourself who really rules the world that you live in so thanks for watching and uh, see you next time thank you